Nice. Yeah. Big deal. Anybody bidding on your truck yet? <laughs> we can start when we're ready. Okay. So, okay. So, Tuck and Portia, you're online and you can hear us. Okay. Just give a thumbs up. Yep. Great. Super. Okay. Um, oh, we need. Um, okay, well, we'll turn everything. Um, we will call this meeting to order by taking attendance. So, Roger Healy. Here. Steve Bird. Here. Portia Hirschman. Here. Buck Barclay. Here. Craig Robinson. Here. Alan Paul. Here. Um, Nick McGee is our council representative, but I don't, he's not online here with us. And um, Michael Daly. Sorry. Here. Very committed. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Good, um, pretty much everybody, and uh, I think it'll be great because we have some good stuff to talk about. Um, we need to approve the minutes from our November 29th meeting. Um, does anyone have any questions or changes about those? No? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So moved. Uh, yep. Second. Great. And um, we vote on that. I forget this meeting. I think you do. Okay. Yeah. And we're very formal. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Roger. Yes. Steve. Yes. Uh, Craig. Yes. Alan. Yes. Portia. Yes. And Tuck. Yes. And Jen. Yes. <laughs> Great. That passes. Our next item is a uh, discussion of the comprehensive plan implementation and tasks as they pertain to the transportation committee. So um, in great thanks to Angela and uh, Autumn for reaching out to us with a little bit of homework um, in advance of this meeting. Thank you for further boiling down uh, these items. I feel like we've, we've had a number of iterations of that. Um, and I, I generally thought this iteration was pretty easy to yeah. digest and sort through. Um, and so I don't know if you do you have other, do you have anything else that you want to um, Yes, talk about I want to go through it with you guys yeah. and yeah. figure out um, next steps. and. Talk about what these things mean. Yes. Did you not get my vote? I didn't get your vote. No, oh, I sent them. You uh, said I thought you just sent. I'll send them later. Maybe you just no. send them to Angela. Maybe. Yeah. Nick. Um, Nick is saying front door is locked. Yeah. We'll go okay. grab him. On the Zoom call. What? What are the yellow ones? Right. They're just the ones with the most. Oh, I see. Okay. You wanted five though, right? You said pick the top five. Maybe. Mm. A couple of them, and I'll go through them. We'll see. A couple of them really belong together. Yeah. You know? Yes, sir. They really yeah, there were some I was like, these are both great. Three and they things. feel like the same exact thing. I said, yeah, see above. I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I took a picture like that. Hey, Nick, sorry. That's fine. I waited as long as I could. You know? <laughs> yeah, he's not coming. I was wrong. Jen, if you want, I'll go ahead and share my screen and then I can walk you guys through the presentation and sure. the conference of planning. Great. Yeah. Me too. Uh -huh. What? Okay. 
I noticed you didn't fill this in yet. No. <laughs> Uh, just in the bottom right. Where is it at? In the bottom right corner. This one? Just to the left of the bag. Oh, wait. Right. Right. I know, just left. Oh, one more second. Thank you. <laughs> I never can find it when I'm in here. Okay. So uh, the comprehensive plan implementation, this is a similar thing we did with Long Range. They had already prioritized their task. The comp plan has task and work for all of the committees and commissions to be. Um, so Luckily, what I got here long range had already prioritized theirs. So what we did is we went through the exercise and talked about each one, uh, their top five, top three, three to five, and figure out what they really meant, and then try to narrow that down. Because some of these statements are very big picture, and it's hard to figure out where staff and, and this committee, what our work is, right? So what we, we want five paths, and we want sidewalks. Well, what does that really mean? Like, how do we make that happen? So part of this discussion is trying to figure out how to get to those uh, specific requirements. So these are just the five vision statements and I apologize the spreadsheet, it made it seem like we had more vision statements, but there are only five in the comp plan and the majority of uh, this group's work is in number five. And it's all about the transportation network and efficiencies. So this is your preliminary recommendation. So these are your, um, and I grouped, you see in the middle, the combined, I put two of them together about uh, the complete streets. They just didn't make sense to be alone. So the stars, this is based on everybody's input that I had so far, sort of preliminary recommendations. The ones with the stars, the one with the most stars was improving connectivity and providing safe transportation alternatives throughout the town. Uh, that was kind of the one that was touched on the most. And then complete streets and then street acceptance ordinance. Um, that was touched on, and then transit. So those were the ones in no particular order. Everybody, for the most part, seemed to have um, some prioritization. Work. So this is what it looks like before we get started, right? And then we'll look at it again when we're done. And feel free to make notes. And you know, this is kind of a working discussion. So we'll go through uh, what these mean, and then. If you have something to add to each one, what you think it might mean, um, feel free to chime in. So this first one, vision two, this one uh, is heavy in long range planning right now, but foster walkable mixed use development patterns and all the great words, what it really, you know, it's, and, and it's, it's good, but it's like, what does that really get down to, right? So it's all about zoning and uses, connectivity planning, complete streets and options, sidewalks, trails, really making all those things work. So this one uh, was not one of the ones that jumped out. A couple of you had it in your list, but it wasn't the predominant one. Um, so then vision three talks about diversity and characteristics of existing and emerging neighborhood centers and open space. So take steps to ensure that the public realm is safe and accessible for all, regardless of how people move through it. So those, that's really about accessibility, your ADA requirements, different modes of mobility, um, safe routes to school, it's main bike head, um, shuttle systems to beaches, just some other ideas, school bus usage. So that one, vision three, those types of things are what you can look at to accomplish those. Wait, now where is that on here? Ah, it's this one. That's the second one. The second one. I'm just going straight down this list. Oh, okay. Autumn, Autumn, could you could you show us who are on Zoom a little bit more of what you're looking at, perhaps? I All we're seeing is transportation committee. Oh. Oh, oh sorry. Let's see how can we do this. Share uh, screen. I thought we did it. Share screen. Yeah, that's way up here on my uh, business <laughs> skill set. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You need to bring a fourth grader in here to help us. Yeah, I would stop sharing. It seems like a good idea. Can you see can you, that now? Can you see that? Yes, before? thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't do that, school. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um. So, vision three. Those are the types of things that uh, can go into that. Is main bike pad, is that a 
program? It is. It's when I looked up safe routes to school in Maine, that's like what it has become. And I thought, oh, cool. And there's some really, there's did a really fast dive into it, but there's some really good information out there. Um, like through the DOT. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. So then vision four. Uh, so this one is the third one down. And this one, you got a little bit of traction in your prioritization, but it's all about uh, businesses and tax base, respecting natural resources, and then supporting opportunities for residents. So some of the things that go into this um, would be review zoning, GMO review. And some of these tasks have different committees and they're assigned to more, more than one. So you all may be just sort of an assistant that one, whereas long range is really looking at that. Um, so some of these do have some, some crossover. Uh, GMO review, something where it's ongoing. Impact fees, staff is looking at those. And then design standards, the commercial design standards were kicked off in long range planning and then sidewalks. So um, not a lot really for transportation, more as an assistant sort of, if you will, for the standards with this one. But then vision five and the rest of them are all vision five and they're all about transportation. It's, it's all the work really that comes from this committee. Um, so this one's about trails and um, connect, continue to develop trails where possible for destinations. And so community services is about 95% with their parks master plan. They're doing a town council workshop in the next few weeks and it's very close. And so we can use that to when we do our transportation master plan to make sure that we've identified places people want to go and then distances and connection opportunities and then missing links, if you will. So we can see the, the lines on the map. There's a trail, there's a place to go to, there's a there's a link that we need to connect. And so that the transportation plan will build on that information. So that's underway. Uh, and then bike byways, that is part of that transportation plan as well. So that'll be included. And so then ordinance amendments, if there's any incentives or requirements, once we get through those planning exercises to make those things happen, um, those are some things that can come out of this group. And then design standards for trails. Um, there may be different options for those. So one question, Autumn, would be, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, when, when Long Range was going down through these, we assigned a what what I'll say was like a principal mm -hmm. committee, mm -hmm. and then we also assigned assist committees. Was these items all the principal items for transportation, or is some of these on the assist side? I want to be perfectly honest. I didn't see that that was captured in that way. I just saw groupings of. Um, okay. It could be that it's just the first one listed. Is the primary one, but there were a lot of different groupings. There was, but but I feel like this. I one thought we had tried to assign a principal committee. To, this one is to look at it, but probably community services, and then we assist. Yeah, right? they, so, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Some of these just didn't play out that we assign them specific. Well, I shouldn't say specifically, but we tried to assign these items to the committee that we felt would have the most impact on them, right? but that they might need to talk to a different committee in order to get their take on it as well. Gotcha. Because they weren't clean right. in terms of, of where they should go. Crossover. So, oh. And just follow up on that. So is long range kind of the umbrella mm -hmm. on tracking yeah. all of the implementation efforts? Yeah, and, okay. and we split them up. But when we went down through the list, we said we think this should go there or here. The spreadsheet that you were Angela mm -hmm. sent out initially um, actually had different tabs in it, and so the tab that looked most like this that we all ranked, um, I think, was the most simplified version. Mm -hmm. And then there ahead of that was one that had all the transportation tabs simplified, and then before that was the full action plan list. And so it looks like. The, there is a column with a heading for potential committees, but it, and um, I'm assuming someone just filtered out the ones that had transportation in it, and that's how we ended up with our list. But several of those have like multiple committees listed. So yeah. it says, like that's all. Transportation, planning board, and long range. 
it doesn't necessarily identify them at least in this version as like and this is primary the, and the first spreadsheet and what I sent you is what I inherited. Yeah, it's on it's yeah. under the full action planning right. list. And then you go to the right. Go all the way to the right and you'll and kind of see who we thought. Yeah, where it would fall. So like and this one here is just transportation, right? If I'm seeing this correctly. I think so. There's no potential committee for community services. Community service has some other trails, and see, and I think that it's part of the there's some conservation stuff. has some trail things, right. and so my role is to make it all make <laughs> sense. Uh, and so that's that's where I'm headed. And that'd be parks and recreation too. Well, community services, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're working on this, and then conservation's working on it from a different, and then land trust has some. So mm -hmm. this is really just transportation focused. So everybody has a piece. So that's that's what's great and hard about the comp plan is that it it touches a lot of different things, and we're trying to keep everything working together and not in the mm -hmm. um, silos. And forgive me if I miss this. It, I don't know, but the Long Beach Planning Committee try to have this information fed back up to them at uh, like a specific timeline on a date or is there have we... some of them? What we looked at was under the original call, was it meant to be something that had a short term mm -hmm. turnaround, had a long term turnaround, sure. was out years? Kind of thing. Yeah. So that's as close as we came to trying to determine when we were looking for feedback. Okay. So no hard, no no hard dates. dates. Okay. Um, and then I think the other thing to be mindful of is that council just had their goals workshop this past Saturday. Right. So there'll be directives for certain committees coming out of that. Right. For initiating certain. Yep. Objectives. Yeah, I was just Great. trying to get in. So hopefully they're marching the same path. Yeah, well, we'll see how they plan. <laughs> That's part of my task. And what I would like to do with this is, you know, I want to, this is something I think may have rolled out to you guys like a year ago, but not in this manner. So I wanted to start over, but I also want to set up, it's the beginning of the year and it's a great time to set up a metrics so for some real data that we can collect, but we've got to go through it and figure it out a little bit. So, um, we're going to get there. But. So just in looking at your list, there was a couple of items up or above, mm -hmm. but the comp plan vision five is where transportation gets everything. Yeah. So that's what all these are. Uh, most of yeah. them. Yes. Because we had some in vision two. Yeah, that's what these yeah. are too. Okay. Yep. They're all on here. Yep. This is just a really simplified, uncolorful version that we can work from. Yep. Gotcha. I just big picture, medium, and I divided yep. it out and then simplified it so it was just easier to work from. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah that quite the poster. <laughs> <laughs> so we we are just doing the third tab there. Yeah. That's, that's we're just we trying to focus that kind of stress. Well, the other one's prettier. Whoever work. put that together, wow. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work, a lot of effort. So. Yeah. A lot of information. Yeah. Well, and this is all the action items that we mm -hmm. felt could be pulled out of the comp that we needed to work on over the next 10 to 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so this vision five talks about connecting Oak Hill and the Downs into a viable downtown as described in a downtown for Scarborough adopted in 2018. So just some items that can go into that. Um, complete streets. You see complete streets a lot in these. Um, bike signals, transit stops, shelters, uniform signage, uniform landscaping, street treatments, creating that downtown sort of look. These are just the types of things you could look at when you get into wanting to achieve this what are bike signals? Is that just traffic lights? Uh, different yeah. sort of signals. Jen actually is a good person to ask for. There's different yeah. signalization <laughs> methods. And... Signals intended just for cyclists. So right now, we don't have these. These are not in use anywhere in Maine. They're used in other parts of the country quite successfully and certainly around the world. Um, but the idea is that it would allow um, if, you, if you got to an inner, right now, uh, cyclists are required to adhere to general traffic signals just like everybody else. 
Um, but a separate bike signal um, you would put in if you wanted to control um, cyclists in a different way than vehicles. So a lot of times this would look like, um, you know, you'd let you'd have a green light for cyclists to go ahead of the traffic and get them, you know, 10 seconds up in front of the first car moving, which would allow them to proceed through the intersection and then sort of um, be on their way and or vice, vice versa, um, particularly um, you know, if you have straight forward or sort of simple intersections, you can kind of get it done with what we have now. But um, when you start having more complex movements and particularly conflicting movements, where like if you have a cyclist that wants to go straight and a car that wants to go right, it's highly dangerous. Um, and so that's one tool. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, like a High impact, but also high cost sort of tool in the toolbox. And um, we're hoping that at some point DOT will say, Yeah, this is a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At, like T intersections too. So, like, say if you're on Route One going north, it's like Scarborough Down or something. Yeah. And you have like a protective or the bike lane going like northbound on Route One. Just because cars are taking lefts out of Scarborough Downs doesn't necessarily like stop bikes from right. going through like with cars. cars. And if you create bike specific lanes, you could have specific uh, orientation. For instance, left hand turns are always difficult for cyclists. So if you have a bike lane that's situated in between the turn lane and the major lane, something that indicates cyclists can go now, that helps too. You could kind of think of it like, you know, kind of how we have pedestrian signals for crosswalks yeah. as we do with our regular signals. When you look at this one here, uh -huh. are you primarily focusing on Route One as a connector, as a as the primary connector, or are you anticipating some other connection between One Fourteen and and the Downs? I can tell you that when we first hey, talked about this long range wise, we were looking at Sawyer Road, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but some of the possibilities have gone away yeah. since this started in 2016. So about that track view road, it seems like it's like a... Not a private road now? No, not, not that one, I think. I, I, it's like a small neighborhood, I'm thinking it's, of, a little, it's like, very narrow. It wouldn't be something so, put like a major road for that looks like there's a clearing. Yeah. I have a more a general question for the whole group related to that, because there are a lot of these, um, these these items that talk about connectivity and we've actually done a lot of talking about connectivity even before we got here um but i'm just curious if you like what does that mean to each of you and then like to this group in particular because i think scarborough has um we have some connectivity challenges sort of across the board from a number of different um modes but i'm curious if that like maybe just a quick show of hands when we when when you read into these lists and it's talking about connectivity um did that was was that vehicular related for anyone was that like your first thought was like oh we need we need a more direct car route from here to here no no I what that was I mean, we got this. Was for mine. I mean <laughs> I'm just i'm just curious i mean if you want to reduce traffic say on route one I mean, you can put all the you know pedestrian paths you want, but you got to reduce traffic. You've got to have connecting roads. So I, I think that, and that's been the challenge in this town is getting. I mean, you you remember this? Um, remember when they were talking about putting Payne Road, not you know dead dead ending just down by the on the on the vine, yes, but going right across, yes, and then connecting with um, yeah. Route One mm -hmm. down by Dunstan mm -hmm. Village down in that area there, and. Um, but it's always been a challenge. It's either there's these established neighborhoods or there's wetlands. You know, I mean, that's the challenge. Or both. <laughs> you know, or both. Yeah. And I, I think that depending upon what committees you may have served on will influence that decision. Because <laughs> what, when we were on the planning board, it was all about interconnectivity between developments or uh, walkway trails through the woods connecting between developments and trying to get movement in that fashion 
we worked to do that as much as we could. But so it was vehicular, it was pedestrian, it was bikeways. It was in general, what can we do to connect one area of the town to another area of the town? Okay, thanks. That was a good segue no. to this one. Let's see, where'd it go? So this one's improving connectivity and providing safe transportation alternatives throughout the town to reduce the number of cars and create happier, healthier residents. So this one is really, when I think of connectivity, I do think of vehicles first, because if you can get a vehicle, then I can get a person, right? So, because the sidewalk follows and the path follows. So, and I'm always looking for different options to get from point A to point B as a planner to get the congestion away to provide options. You know, you know um, what, when I look at these things, I, I know there's people in town who are bicycle enthusiasts, there's, there's walkers. Mm -hmm. They like walking, but as long as I can recall, the biggest issue in this town is vehicular traffic and how to. Well, because no one feels safe to bike or walk. Well, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I that you, you can put a bike path, but if you're still going to have traffic, you know, vehicles, you're not you're not solving the problem. To me, you've got to you've got to address the traffic, the vehicles, somehow, and that would be connectivity. I mean, for instance, where, where Jen and I live, there's actually on, well, we'll we live in the Pleasant Hill area. There's all kinds of ways of getting to different places from where we live. But if you get west of the Turnpike or even west of Route 1, mm -hmm. that's not the case. I mean, the connectivity really is, is diminished quite dramatically. Right, but won't the traffic just catch up to those new lanes since of how much space the cars take up? Isn't this induced demand? Uh, and so if we just keep adding roads and lanes, we're still going to have the traffic issue. And that's why we need to focus on the pedestrian and the bike and the public transit options. Then well, the issue is you're, you're not going to move people from your cars unless you feel safe walking or on a bicycle. So it's, it, Roger, it, it's interconnected. Um, but if people don't feel safe, they're going to get in their cars because they got to, you know, a lot of metal surrounding them. Uh, if you ride your bike up Route One, you're you know you're taking your life in your hands. Well, you you know if you're in living at the Downs and you need to go to the post office, I would venture to say over ninety percent of people are not going to ride their bike or walk over there. But if there was a path that went directly there, it still say you probably wouldn't. Okay. No, I, I disagree. I, I think but I think you will find that the folks that live in the Downs would. Because it's a different type of living, right? And the people that live in a different neighborhood might not, but there's different options. And so if you had a good safe path, I I think people would walk it. I walk everywhere that I can walk to because I don't want to park. Yeah, well, if you look at it, if well, you like look at the 114, the sidewalk there. Mm -hmm. You used to see people, you know, very handful, I'm telling you, that would walk on that or ride, you know, be in their wheelchair or ride a bike there. Once they put the path in, I see every time I go by, I see at least one person on there in the daytime and stuff. So I, I think if you have these paths that are multi-purpose, I think those is a segment, you know, you might not be one of the bikers. I bike, I ride all over Greater Portland, and you find these trails like the Green Belt and you know, Eastern Trail. They're fantastic. There's no cars on them. It takes people off, whether it's for recreation or for transportation. I, I guess. For instance, where we live, there's a there's a, a convenience store, Al's Variety, mm -hmm. down in the industrial park. If you put sidewalks from our neighborhood down there, I would still venture to say the vast majority of people would get in their car to drive down to Al's. They wouldn't walk down to Al's, so they wouldn't take their bike down. There would be some, like maybe you yeah. would, mm -hmm. but I'm saying the vast majority. And and. Yeah. Uh, Huh? Yeah. It's yeah. mindset. Well, right what? now they don't do it because there's no safe way to get there. If you have a safe exactly. path to get there, people do use those. And habits, you know, especially you get, around the country, you have to create new habits with new opportunities and new things. There's nothing wrong with getting a car there either. Yeah, you have to. It's it's all of it. You have to come at it from all sides because there's not one answer for everyone. You have to. The whole goal of the comp plan, and I think what's great about Scarborough is you offer somebody for something for everyone. Right? You have so many different types of development and environments and everything, but you have to make sure that people can get to those places safe. And it also increases your livability and 
you have a different mindset in this part of the country for I mean, outside. You want to be outside and you can't today. If if I could have just walked anywhere all day and not been in my office, I would have walked everywhere. It's beautiful. It's 45 degrees. You know, it's not a you're right, you're wrong kind of thing. It's all together. It's just it's and the great thing is if you have the streets. And that's what complete streets. You're if you're thinking about these roads, you're also thinking about the pedestrians and the bikes at the same time. You're accomplishing all the goals, right? You're taking congestion away. You're uh, providing alternatives to get from point A to point B. So as you do grow and you get denser in areas, you don't feel it as much at every light because there's more than one light to get to it. But you also have that extra right away if you plan it right and get it built correctly. I think we're gonna. It. So my take on this is, I think you're actually gonna start to see a little shift in town as well. And Sedco has some data to back this up, which is since COVID, a lot more people are either working from home and in town, and we also have a lot more businesses in this community that are locating here. So I think before, and I agree with Roger to a large degree, we had huge populations that were traveling either through town or from town to get to their employment which was not located in town. And the shift that I think we're starting to see in town is as we do have more larger employers in town. And with that comes that desire for, do I need to take my car now? Is there a way for me to leave them at home? Because now my employer is still in my town. Um, and then access to the amenities, of course, I think. So I, I agree, it also helps with the traffic flow patterns, but you're, as somebody who grew up in Maine, you're never going to take my car away from me because I know there's no other way to get places. I mean, that's the bottom line. I, I need that vehicle to go to the town over. I need it because, you know, 10 minutes down the road is actually over 10 miles away. So, and usually narrow, unlit, and no shoulders. And so. I, I, think, you know, the, I think that's a really good point, which is, you know, essentially just mode shift. Like you're looking for, you're looking opportunities to help convince someone to not sell their car, but mm. <laughs> to on occasion make a trip in a different way than they would normally. Um, you know, I like I like the the Alice convenience store example is a great one. My husband often goes to work at like four in the morning and um, will stop at Al's to get coffee. This is not a trip that he is going to walk to and then walk back and then get in his car and then drive to work. So there will always be those sort of pass by um, pass by trips. But you know for for trips that we have control over, whether it be you know we have control over the time of day or or where we're going, um, you know, I, I would love to combine a walk with a functional, you know, drop off at the post office um, if, if that was an option. And I think some other people would too, you know, if you're home on your lunch break and you've been working in your house all day, um, geez, that would be great to just be able to, you know, hop on a trail um, for a short. So or, I'm not exactly sure people would walk from Walgreens to Ace Highway. No, they drive. They get in their car. Their car and then they go to the post office and drive over. They, they, yeah. No, I've seen people. No, go. I. I <laughs> My six-year-old solidly guilt tripped me one day into walking from Ace Hardware to Hanford. Um, we had been to uh, Ace to pick up two tiny little things and then we, I got in the car to get buckled and she was like, mom, are we gonna drive? Where are we driving? It's so close. She was like, I love it. Shut the door. <laughs> it's all about how it's designed, right? It's not designed for walkability. You child that yeah. yeah. I mean, when the planning board was, um, was debating the um, uh, the affordable housing for seniors behind Little Dolphin, all right? We ha we actually had quite a discussion about how can the people walk from there down to Hannaford? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? You can't do it. <laughs> no, you can. It's just long. This is so oh, you have, Well, you, you have to go all the way around the, the, the road, okay? Right. We're right. trying to figure out how can they get directly because these are seniors. No, I, I, and, and you can't we do We had them go to the back of the park <laughs> we, we, right? we, back we, up the back of the hand yeah. where the truck to trailers. And there's, right, a, steep, right, there's yeah. a pitch there and you just well, can't do it. said to Karen. Right. Says, yeah, we wanted to have a door in the back. I'm like, Hannaford's not going to back the right. Right. <laughs> you know, just for a day. Eight. Eight. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So I, I just helping focus because I think um, what I took away from this last council goals workshop is we really want to be very focused on attainable goals and it's good to have long-term ones, but maybe transportation should talk about 
what are some really short-term changes we can make? And maybe it's focusing it in an area like this, but to take this task and really work it. Because this is honestly where our high growth, density growth areas are. It's where we're seeing our most population movement. It's also where you see the most traffic volume. So if we can make pedestrian or connectivity improvements in this area here, perhaps it alleviates some of the traffic that we're seeing and an increase in traffic, which we will see as the downtown continues to build out as more apartments come online. So I'm just saying, as because what happens is um, serving on a bunch of committees over a few years is you try to do it all at once and you get this big grand vision and then you find out that you've actually accomplished zero yeah. because you get a little bit drawn here, 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 and here. So the exercise of focusing it down into little, you know, bite-sized pieces, I think might be really helpful, especially when it comes to implementation. Um, because it's gonna come through here, it's gonna go back to one range, and then it's gonna end up, you know, probably an ordinance and then probably then into the council. So it's quite the pathway for a single task to take, okay. let alone a town wide review. So and just some that's just, just my thought. Say that just to clarify, you're talking about Oak Hill Municipal Campus, the general area. Well, I'm not telling you that this is should be your area focus. I'm just saying yeah. it makes sense to make it an area of focus, whether it's your number one priority or not. I don't know, but maybe it's pain road because well, we're okay. starting to see an explosion on pain road, you know, and I don't know. About Haggis too. No, yes. Haggis Parkway is like untapped potential, right? And it's yeah. it's got some stuff. So is community services that, is that within ninety five percent giving a map, so to speak, of what's out there? Mm -hmm. my, my understanding is yes, it's it's essentially an inventory of of public spaces and places. So public buildings and open space. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, but it doesn't show like say in the Pleasant Hill neighborhood this interconnecting path that goes from no, there over no, here. No, it's or... not quite so. It's something that we, at, at other times, we've talked about using this committee to maybe help. Right, that's what I thought. Well, no, because if there's those missing links, mm -hmm. you know, so, oh yeah, this is a great thing, but there's a dead end street here. There's a dead end street so here, and we can make a path. Because I know like down mm -hmm. here um, behind the middle school, there's a path that comes right. over from, you know, but they're dead end streets. But if you, Go down to the dead end. There's a dirt path. You go through the woods and you come out to school. Um, you know, I think public works. Yeah. I think I, I think I saw some sort of a map like that a number of years ago, and I think public works might have something like that. So we have so a when, lot of the data, and the transportation master plan is going to take it to the next step. Okay. So we're going to take what parks that what we have already because we have a lot of sidewalk inventory data and everything, and then that's part of the transportation master plan. We we met with um we're, we're still working on our scope so that'll come to you guys next time um that narrow down scope and we don't have the million dollars we have this amount so we prioritize yeah. in sort of um areas that we need to work on the most and what we get so we'll we'll have that discussion next time um, but that's a big component of that getting to finish in that gap um so just some things you can do for connectivity, kind of ordinance amendments, uh, requiring connectivity through subdivisions, um, requiring cross access easements for commercial properties, you know, making sure we have a lot of, um, we have a lot of older things that exist that are going to be hard to fix, right? But for new, if we can start to really think about how we can address that uh, bike access, Allowing connectivity in the Crossroads Planning District to Sawyer. That's something that I think it's been brought up before. It's, it's not allowed right now. Um, so there's no connectivity, you know, all the way through. Oh, they're not. Well, there will be bollards there. There will be a path there. Because I've, I've run that every yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> but not a, not, a not a vehicle. Right. Nice. Trying to vehicle. Move vehicles. So, okay. Huge fan. Yeah, that's come up multiple times. You know, when you get into that, yeah, which mean, part? that's where you definitely have to have uh, From problems. the Downs. Well, that's so you're so right next to the, um, the road you were talking about. Track, now, whether, whether once they I think it's down, down, just down, next down, to it. Right, right. We'll see what I do. No, I'll see what I do. So, I'll see what I do. So, that's a case where not allowing cars, I think, is bad. Oh, no, sorry. So, that is what I was talking It keeps that road safer. And then Sawyer is a little quieter. So, people biking from the downs to the high school or something. Is safer than if you're allowing cars to just zip down that. There's a sidewalk because it's only that goes right. Into the no, high so it's right to here. This crosswalk. So, yeah, I think I think that's a good one to to keep like that. So I think connectivity is 
blocking off you know, some for... roads right this... Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like that. So the one second one the second cars is on the, the requiring it. Yeah, you have one party that's mm -hmm. happy about it, but then you have somebody the next door neighbor says, no. Or we've had geographical problems because either the grade's different, you know, mm -hmm. it looks nice on a one dimensional piece of paper, but you know, the grade's like this, and you can't do that. So requiring it is a well, requiring it could even mean that you have stronger ordinances for where your driveway approaches can go, right? So it's it's you you have to work together to get if you can only have one approach for 450 feet, then you're gonna have to have cross access these. Sure. And so I mean there's different ways yeah. to do it, but having a driveway, a curb cut, a curb cut, a curb cut. Oh, absolutely. Like perpetuating what you don't like continually because it's a no, I, I, it you have to kind of get in front of it for new things. I mean, it works you know, great in some situations, other ones, it's just physically impossible. Yeah, like, I guess it's limited, right? But say it wasn't limited, and we just said, okay, you're doing this acre, and here's your driveway, and your driveway. We are not, we have an opportunity to make a, something great and high, high level, high level yeah. and not, you know, through the sins of the past that, that are everywhere in the country. Sure. Something everybody we has. Some of it's required, though, in certain. We have going. some things, but we get a lot of waivers, and we get a lot of mm, can't make it happen. Okay. We have a lot of um, we have issues with fire access and things that conflict. So it's definitely a deep dive into some ordinance requirements. That the thing that's popular. interesting about Scarborough, I think, is that it's basically you've got a blank sheet mm -hmm. because there's so much open space and everything. Um, and so you can do things where in a lot of other communities you kind of restrict it because mm -hmm. of some of the areas are so built out that you can't do much with it. You know, you can't widen the roads, you can't do this, you can't do that. But Scarborough really has a lot of, you can do a lot of things. And I think the only um, limitations are wetlands mm -hmm. and basically the will of the people to actually do it. You know, and those are the two. Otherwise, I mean, if you if you could, especially, I think you can't more do much of our arteries are a little bit more challenging because you then talk about taking private property where a lot of those yeah a lot of those older houses are built right up on the road yeah so widening becomes a challenge yeah bike lanes become a challenge because you can't widen yeah not without taking the spot you know so that's the tricky part yeah is our arteries are very well been established we don't have it we haven't had a new artery in town for how long yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about Oak Hill. And Probably, I guess we maybe went the other direction. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, <I'm putting laughs> we can we can put all of our paths down. Right. Like it's down the middle, part, street stream, all of the things. Well, I would, you know, we talk a lot about Oak Hill, and we talk about Nascarver off by 22, up by O'Donnell's. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I and I experienced this recently, we, we still have a big problem down at Dunstan. Because there was a traffic, some issue with traffic heading down there a few weeks ago. And the trouble is you can't, there's no way of getting around it. You have to go through, you have to go through Dunstan. Mm -hmm. There's there's no way of getting over to Broad Turn Road or down down to Pine Point without you, you have to go through Dunstan. It's there are really, a few tricks, but I don't want to share them in a public meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone will start using them. No. <laughs> it is tough. You're right, because if Route One backs up, and I've been stuck in that mess yeah. where, or it's closed. That happened to me at right. Christmas time. I'm starting to get there from here, and what? I'm not interested in driving to Bothell. And that's sort of an uncomfortable conversation we're going to have to have with the transportation master plan. Mm -hmm. uh, what we don't have is this big map, right? And it's, here's our major arterials, here are our collectors, and here are the other ones that connect these points. So we have some constraints. Obviously, wetlands. We have some definite constraints, but we have to figure out where those lines go for the future. And it can't just, we can't rely on everything that we have now, right? So, and that's painful discussion because, ooh, that line's on my property. It's not really, it's the line on a map. It's not, um, and that's pretty normal for a lot of places to have that. And that's gonna be some of that connectivity discussion to find out where, where the most angst is for the residents, you know? where people are trying to get to, um, and is there an opportunity to connect them with a new road or a new 
you know. And some of this stuff is actually regional, regional based mm -hmm. too, because for instance, where we live again, um, Pleasant Hill Road is a main connector for South Portland and Cape Elizabeth. And South Portland in the past has talked about from Highland Avenue putting a putting a connector out to Route One. Now, if they ever did that, that would alleviate vehicles coming down the Pleasant Hill Road, mm -hmm. and then either passing, you know. So some of the stuff is regional that has to be done. For sure. And yeah. I think the same is down south. You know, Flag Bond Road, Flag Bond Road, or whatever it is down in Saco, if they ever put a connector into the turnpike. Right. You know, that would alleviate some of the vehicles coming. Not. So then we have um, complete streets, and I put these three together because uh, you have refine the towns, refine the towns complete streets policy to establish design parameters, and then create a multimodal network by prioritizing complete street interventions that connect residents to centers. And then continue to implement the complete streets policy adopted. And I passed out the complete streets policy. I'm sure you all have it, but it was adopted in 2016. And um, one of the things I think, you know, we should complete the complete streets policy, right? It has a lot of actions that weren't um, done. And so and in, in doing that, we would not create this one fit for everything, there would be definitely some options for different street types and different scenarios, urban, rural, suburban settings. And so that's some work that really needs to happen and would really take care of um, at least three of these things. It, has there ever been a study on how effective Eastern Road was when the attempt was made there for the complete score? They, I, they tried to have a complete street. I can there. tell you, I'm sure that there are documented versions of that, but I can tell you on a statewide level, and it's probably the type of thing that like at higher levels that doesn't, that information doesn't trickle down because it's not really news here. Because yep. It's ours and we, we have it. That that implementation um, for those that, um, it's called an advisory bike lanes, which is the the dual dash lines on either side of the road, which is an appropriate treatment for a place where you have a lot of um, bikes and peds and maybe minimal vehicular traffic. Um, that is often and continues to be even, even now an example given of, of um, there's one in the one in Scarborough for Eastern Road, and then there's another one in like Yarmouth or North Yarmouth, I think. Um, Portland did it. Portland implemented one um, in the fall, and it didn't, uh, didn't go very well initially. But I think um, it's, it's working better now. There's some errors in how it's implemented. But anyway, Scarborough being one of the first or the first that is often like a case study and an example given on how to how and where to use that particular treatment very, very successfully. Okay. Um, the Bike Coalition of Maine is a, is a good one um, that often talks to other communities about that. So this is this is an option. This is a roadway treatment option as implemented in Scarborough. And then, you know, these are pictures and things like that. So um, I don't think it's something that we have necessarily talked a lot about here in our own mm -hmm. community, but I know that um, on, a, on a more broad level. Anecdotally, I've run on that road like four or five times a week. It's, it's pretty safe. It seems like all the cars know what they're doing. Um, Eastern Trail? Eastern, Eastern Road, yeah. Eastern and, Road. So it's it's going to get more use when the connector goes right. 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 sure. yeah. up. Volume is really important in that spot. Yeah. 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 That application has to be really limited. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you don't think it'll work on Route 1? Give it a try. I mean, there's always like, a walk. Yeah. Dog running. Yeah. 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 So we just need cars coming both ways and people on the side of this. But that's like the heart of complete streets, right? It's like that treatment would be wildly inappropriate mm -hmm. on a number of other roads yeah, that true. we have. And um, so it's, it's those types of things are only successful when you put them in the right place. You yeah. can't you know, use the wrong tool. and. Um, does complete streets include like separated bike lanes on a road or is it strictly trying to fit everyone on like a single road it's all of the above you yeah, can do I this you can do that i see it's, it's a like a mix and match the, the term street is not 
necessarily super literal. But okay. What you're getting yeah. At. I, gotcha. I think it's it's a general approach to right of way treatments. Okay. Um, and so yeah, it could, it could it be a sidewalk separated yeah. with some trees. So, and, for instance, okay. like down at the beach and stuff, you might not have a sidewalk on this side of the street. You might yeah. have one on one. But that's still a complete street. Yeah. Or it could be. Based on the usage of the street, like we said, you know. Okay. It could be a whole bunch of things. It could be a wider street, it could be a narrow, you know, narrow, it could be two, you know, two divided lanes with the center. Right. And down the middle, like you see up here. Yeah. Was, okay. With a toolbox. <laughs> and that would be the next step for us to, to figure say. out what we want to use in different situations and use our existing roads and what would work and where. No, does that come from an engineer, like a traffic engineer that would, or our layman, like, you know. I think the, the toolbox, you mean? Well, deciding which tools to use and in which places. Is that... um, um, no offense meant for this committee. <laughs> But um, just in terms of like committee overall, I think a committee would be very helpful in um, maybe doing some research or um, thinking about where, what, thinking strategically about our own um, network here because we know that best. But yes, I, I, it would absolutely be a call appropriate to be made by, um, the town engineer, um, DPW director, anyone implementing um, changes on our existing roadways, and then or also um, development projects coming to the table that might be required to do offsite mitigation. Obviously, their traffic engineering teams would. Um, we would hope that they would propose, you know, um, appropriate tools used in technology, um, and without a toolbox or any sort of other specific guidance of our own, like we have a policy that essentially says you shall do complete streets. And these are the things that we want to prioritize, but we're not super specific about when we say prioritize pedestrians, we mean we mean off street, off path, 10 foot wide kind of thing, or we mean sidewalk right next to the road, that sort of differentiation. Um and with you know with a with a with a, um, an accessory toolbox to go along with this policy that would make the options to either our own staff or projects coming to the table uh, much clearer. They don't, they don't have to think through that. We would be like, oh, no, this is what we want you to do. And you wouldn't have the, oh, I don't really want to do that. I don't see the benefit. So it's, it's, right. it's yeah. being able to say what you want as a town and saying, this is what we want. This is how you do it. And it's easy and it's expected because right. When you're looking at that from a development perspective, like, oh, I know what I have to do. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. It's not that hard to get there if you know what's expected. But it, it does get uncomfortable when you're negotiating and you're trying to get everything. You're like, well, why do I want to do that? Well, because it says that. Well, it doesn't really say that. Like, yeah. But it means this. Yeah. So that's the whole. So is the point to get it like much more specific mm -hmm. in the cases of the detail of what would come out of it? Yes, I, I think that is needed. And to identify the areas in town where we want certain treatments. And so it's, it's cohesive, okay. right? Yeah. So 10 years from now, you can tell that, oh, that's that's the, that's the tool they used in that part of town. And that made sense. Over in the rural, it would look a totally west of the turnpike. It would look totally different. And then did we get complete streets from the, the state or another town? Or did we come up with that ourselves? Basically, do we have a... Someone oh, else who's thing. updated it that we can go take and be like, these are the ones we want it's to use for Scarborough. It's a, it's a nationwide initiative. So oh, okay. um, it's completestreets.org or something like that. Um, Charles, so there's a lot of information. Great information. That gotcha. And but anything. do those include the detail mm -hmm. that we're looking to implement some, in ours? Some don't. Some communities, okay. some communities have a policy that says you shall implement complete streets. I say. Period. Other places, I'm guessing, probably like your um, your Denver's and your Seattle's probably have older, right? Probably mm -hmm. have a hundred page manual. Yep, that is very specific about gotcha. what and 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 then everything in between. Um, and they're all, you know, they're all good steps in the right direction. Right. Some communities have just been working on this a lot longer than others. And I think when you do that, you end up getting. It, it probably came, but could it have come from the um, the concept of great American neighborhoods 
that was that sort of percolated around here. Yeah, like hand in hand type of thing. Yeah, like Dunstan. Remember when Dunstan was yeah. first talking about Dunstan? It was a great yeah. American neighborhood. I mean, it's a throwback. I mean, it's a throwback to what it used to be decades ago. I mean, I grew up in a, in a town that had complete streets and a grid network, right? Yeah, with a lot of different ways. Yeah, I did. You know, and and public transportation too. And it was a suburban community, just like Scarborough, but it had all those things. But it was part of a larger region, you know, a bigger. It, it, it was a town, North Andover, right, which was a suburb of Lawrence. And Lawrence at the time was just like Portland is now. Um, not that way anymore, but I mean, no. that's what it was. But no, I know. It's, you know, it's just when you have a bigger community. But we had sidewalks everywhere. And we, Rode yeah. our bikes and that sidewalks, and we took the buses everywhere. We had reliable. We can get you back there. Let's do right. that. I won't live long enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just get me through Dunstan. <laughs> we have a few more. Twenty-eight. Uh, so this one uh, is. That doesn't look like I, I, yeah. No, but this is just an example of you know the, what a a street. A transportation plan can look like with different trails and roads and don't stare at it it doesn't mean anything it's just a picture it's what the colors are. yeah Very yeah high. highways arterials collectors all sorts of things but transfer uh, improving network designs for street connectivity you can do things with um connectivity for cul-de-sacs you can take care of things with block links so you can uh, we don't address block links in our we don't we don't have blocks right we just have one way in and everything and so just block length so you don't uh, want to go down a street that's a thousand feet of just home 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 home, home no. and then a cul-de-sac right so you want a block link so you have to have another road another way to get there and the, what happens and it's just it's development patterns as we have really small subdivisions that have gone in over time and then, you know, five houses here, 10 houses here. I'm totally buying one in a 10 house cul-de-sac, so I get it. Uh, but when you start to think about new things, and especially with some of the zoning that we have that's very dense, you want to make sure you also talk about the things that make the density work, right? You don't want to go down a thousand foot, to a thousand foot road to a bunch of apartments. You need the grid network and all the things that make it work. So it's a full package. Well, you know, um... That reminds me when the Downs, when one of the more recent phases, we required them to put a pathway all the way down along the boundary to the first section. Now that's something we could maybe do when we're doing regular development, say east of the west of the turnpike, when there's wetlands or something. There's always some highlands somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we can say, sure, you can do you can build here, but we want to make sure there's like a pathway. So it can connect to a future development mm -hmm. over there. But we don't do that right now. We just say it's all wetlands. We put boulders there and you can't go there. <laughs> we And we sometimes ask or we think about it, like yeah. could you, would you, but we don't say put the path in. Yeah. Or we get it. We I find it in planning a lot. We'll say, oh, they talked about it, but there's nothing to make them do it. So the next developer, the so, next adjacent developer knows it's going to be a path. Right, and then it's a connection, a connection, and then it's this full picture. You know, it's this map on our desk when a developer comes and wants to do this little piece. Oh, okay, well, I know that there's this road over here that dead ends into this, and it's prime for you to connect. And I also know that there's a path through the woodlands or the uh, wetlands here, and then you can go there. So it gives you those options at planning board, too, yeah. when you, you see a bigger picture, right? Because we look at things very small. We, 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 just, we, look just, at, look we just look at what it is, and yeah. we're trying to get to where we can see yeah bigger scale and make more meaningful choices. Does it make sense? That we need a lot of stuff to do it. Establish like a fund to make those connections to, to throwing it on the last guy in. As sure. To, you know, take the impact fees, throw it into a big pool, and then, oh, he just did this connection because it's a public benefit mm -hmm. to a degree. I mean, yeah, the developer is going to benefit as well. But I think in a lot of these cases, it's not, I don't want to say it's fair, but sure. it would make, be more equitable if there's a community buy-in as well, maybe it's a 50-50 share. I don't know and what could, the thing is. Yeah, but, totally know, could. That's how I get on the other side of the table and when they say, well, you're going to pay for this. Like, I don't know, the checkbook. And it's like, I don't mind paying impact fees. Mm -hmm. so maybe the impact fees aren't enough to 
get that one. But now we got another neighbor that's got a hundred houses here, and we want to connect it. You know, there maybe you know council could consider a fund like that, or maybe it's, you can use tips, uh, not the tip money, but the impact fees to pay for. Well, it. we're gonna look at our recreation impact fees, and yeah. that's something that you know, like maybe that's what we use them for, and. Maybe right. maybe the policy is you donate the land and we make the trail. Yeah, I that mean, sort of exactly. thing. Something I mean, that, that, there's not a the lines on yeah. The paper, but then they say, oh, well, now you got to connect. You know, for instance, when mm -hmm. at our existing apartment complex, they're like, we want a path to be able to get to the middle school from the middle. Mm -hmm. Well, it would have to cross the stream, and you know, and if you're going to build it for a fire truck rescue, whatever to get through there, it's a lot. You know, right. it's not fair to force the developer. In this case, we're just expanding the parking lot thing by ten pieces. Right. Um, to say so, we granted a you know piece of paper that said here's where it could go, um, but actually the money to come up with it, I think maybe there's a pool for that. That our meters better serve as a pool, and I'll tell you why. Because when we use the planning board in the Great Western Star, so we don't want that development. It's a path to nowhere, and so that right. next place is going to mm -hmm. get developed. And not only that, that next developer, wherever you stuck that path, they don't want to be beholden to where that path leads to. They might have a whole different design and plan for their neighborhood yeah. that cuts right down. I mean, that path might lead to somebody's backyard at that point. Yeah, so but it, yeah. Having the fund allows you the flexibility, A, to create that path when the things do come to fruition, but B, the planning board isn't having spent time on the planning board, not this word knows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're there to, Take that developer's application and space and flyers that they used to. And to, to actually, I feel, to actually say, well, down the road, we're going to want this, so do it now. That's a harder sell because you don't know what's going to go on next door most of the time. And you don't know what it's going to look like. And I think I've spent plenty of hours in the planning board arguing about pedestrian ways, whether pedestrian ways meant one sidewalk on one side of the road or two sidewalks, or was it just a trail mm -hmm. and no sidewalks? I mean, remember how many hours we've wasted in meetings debating what that <laughs> language really meant. So uh, I would rather see a fund, uh, a contribution. And then then we have the ability to say, this is a higher priority for us to spend the money on than this area. And why? Because there's three times as many people that can use it here. Mm -hmm. or it's a more popular but, area town. But what if we took, I mean, I appreciate the argument about we could say we're going to put a trail down here and we have no idea what's going to happen. However, what if we said that if you're going to build a development, you're going to give us either a right of way all the way around the development on the outskirt of the development, and if the next person's going to do the same thing, then you're always going to have connected. There's different ways to definitely get there, and I, I think the when I envision it, it's especially in West Scarborough, it's a little different. But if you have, if you've identified on your um, your community services map of where you want those connections to your existing. And so you know where there's wetlands and but there's usable space and things, you, you kind of know that. And so when those developers come in, if you could get that dedication, even though it, maybe you're not building the trail mm -hmm. and maybe that's what the money, but you're getting the land. And then when the next one comes in, you're getting the land. Because otherwise, if you don't get the land in the beginning, you'll never be able to go buy it because suddenly it's worth so much more. And then you're stuck kind of, you're spending more money on land acquisition when if, if, the, if you can have a plan, um, big picture for when this, it's a puzzle, right? And if you know what the puzzle is gonna look like at the end of the day, each piece fits into it really nicely, but you have to define it and you have to do the work to get there. It's not arbitrary. You can't, because it's not a planning board argument like, well, I don't think a trail is going to go there. No, it's it's got to be based on some real stuff and some real yeah. work um, to make it If you did, uh, if you did have a fund, though, like Nick was saying, and the development went in, right, and uh, the town doesn't say you have to put a path there, mm -hmm. but there's a fund, of, there's some money there, then the next development comes in, and before you know it, you'll probably find an informal <laughs> pathway developed by the two neighborhoods making a connection, mm -hmm. at which point then there might be a mechanism to come to the town and say, can we apply some of this money that's in this fund to make this, they say, handicapped accessible pathway or whatever it is. But you gotta have the easements in place. Yeah. Right. I agree with the easements, that's not the problem. It's to force somebody to cost because on this project, it's as simple as 
take the bulldozer, scratch out some dirt, and throw yeah. it in. Easy path, no culprits. Huh? Then other places you've got big ravines yeah. to go through, which that's I think you know, put it on explain. We already have the mechanism. We do it for sidewalks because you know many of us have built sidewalks from nowhere, yep. where it goes from my property line to property line, <laughs> nothing on either side of it. Yep. Um, so you know because we were forced. This town got smart and said. Hey, instead of like a nun such, instead of us throwing money here, we're going to come dig up a few years from now, we'll have this fund. So you pay X dollars per foot. Again, as a developer, we want certainty in things. And, you know, we know, good, my project was the same as this guy's. You know, if I'm putting up 50 feet in, it's 50 feet times X. If I have 175 feet, same X. As opposed to, and, you know, to any come up with the right numbers that are fair, but then between everyone, you know, you can't just pick on one person. Well, you're the last one in. Um, yeah, I, I think I think leaning on the impact fee structure or a separate fund agreement, however that plays out, is a good mechanism for finally achieving those connections, whatever they look like. But I think that um, setting the expectations up front, like we do ordinance work, makes a lot of sense so that. When someone comes to the table, you don't have a trail that dead ends into the back of a, a viable lot because that developer knew before they even laid out those lot lines that there's an expectation that they that they preserve some sort of um, you know, passage there. And I don't know if that requires staff to do some analysis of a submission and the abutting properties before submission mm -hmm. ends up in front of a. Yeah, or we have the inventory like. All the subdivisions have been approved for the past 20 years because there's a ton of those easements yeah. out there. Um, but is there an inventory of them? You know, yeah. right? I know, and yeah. you know, some might need to move. Like, yeah. um, it's hard once a house is built, obviously. Sure. But if it's defined, you know, that these houses all sit next to each other, but this lot right here has a 20 foot or whatever, you know, it'll never be for vehicular easement. But you know, you can write the easement language so. It's only for pedestrian or slash bicycles. There's a lot of ways to get to it. And yeah. I, the discussion is good, but um, we have three more of these. Yeah, I'm going to do one more uh -huh. quick sure, note sure. on the last slide. Uh -huh. So there's really, this is just to keep in the back of your mind, see the uh, grid framework, local routes, yes, you use transportation. But when you uh, move yourself to the new for our cold sack type, what you've done is you've actually removed that, that neighborhood's community park. Can't use a cul de sac and a dead end as a community park. So when you go to the grid system, you actually keep in mind you will have to start building more sure. community park gathering zones for kids and families to gather in community park. So that has to factor into mm -hmm. whatever new designs you come in with and coordination with public works and what the impact of the budgets would be to maintain those parks. Is it a neighborhood association park or right. is it actually a community park? And if so, do you have proper access to those parks? What a lot just of, a, and a, yeah, no, I, I agree with you um, <laughs> because I think that's what the cul-de-sac, you know, I've lived in two cul-de-sac neighborhoods and I've lived in a downtown grid network and then I've lived out in the boonies, right? So um, yeah, you, ha you have to have somewhere for your kids to go no matter what. It's either you have the big backyard or you walk down the street to the neighborhood park. Um, but that's part of like the discussion with uh, design standards for amenities for residential subdivisions. So if you have a subdivision that comes in with a certain amount of homes and you have to set aside for a neighborhood park. So you are doing your fair share. Maybe you don't pay the rec fees if you provide the neighborhood well, park. Maybe there's, the right, fees, right. But there's, the yeah, there's some so. different options right. to get there. It just depends on what our goals are at the end of the day. Um, so this one has to do about street acceptance. It's a lot, some similar things, street design, right, right away with walk length, dead end street, street intersection distance. We have private way standards. Um, just really taking a look at those and making sure that we're getting the streets that we want when we accept them. Um, so it's a, it's a really long ordinance. Um, well, it's not really long. This one's not long. It's like, it should be long, it's 14 pages. But this is what uh, cities should they, like find a middle ground, you know, like there's a little bit um, things missing that we have to sort of create, you know? And I think that's part of it is trying to create some clear expectations. Do, um, do we have a problem in this town with um, private, 
private streets wanting to become public streets. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reason I ask that is because I'm familiar with one in particular where it's in my, it's across the street um, and um, it's a private road. And there's some people on the street wanting to become a public street, but they don't want to go through all the engineering and everything. And maybe what, if you ever do address this, mm -hmm. if you could identify the private roads in town and maybe send them some very simplified explanation as to what should they ever have any desire to have the town accepted as a public street, this is the process you have to go through. Because if one person, like I'm familiar with one person who kind of wants to do this but doesn't want to pay for it, you just want the town to take it right. and start planning that. So that that one person could influence the other people. Yeah, yeah. Some <laughs> people me and some people come to planning board and they're like, we don't ever want the town to yeah. take this over. Right. So we don't want to we can take their street or, you know, accept these ordinances. It's fine. We can just, we're just going to never give it over. But what happens is, okay, so that person says that and we have to go, believe them. Like, I don't, but five years out, 25 years out, there's, you know, I have experience working on streets way older than that, even. That it's got a lot of unaccepted well, it's roads. A huge problem. And um, we actually tried one in Portland. Two, we stopped providing public services on non-public streets. And I don't think it was like it's a worked. it was like a call center. Like I don't I don't think I read anything from the shelter about it. I'm like, that's the right way to go about it. But um, it's very difficult over a period of time because people don't, you know, you, you have successive owners who were not involved at, at the beginning and they don't care that, what do you mean this is in the public street? Like, looks like it, smells like it kind of thing. Um, and, and I think most people would be very surprised at what is involved in, in going from one to another. Maybe you get lucky in your situation. It's fairly straightforward, but you know, if you don't have public sewer and that's a requirement of a public street, that's a, that's a massive undertaking. Um, or your road is completely graded in the wrong direction. And those are things that are really hard to get over. Yeah, I think um, I think somewhere in between, in between the two <laughs> that you have to keep it more. Uh, and then we have shared parking. Uh, developing new parking standards, and this one's really about parking standards, um, addressing our parking minimums. Some of them work, some of them don't work. We know that. Um, but you're going to take care of that, right? Because yeah. Nick and I are agreeing with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have problems there. <laughs> and then we have the final one is enhanced transit access. And this one is one we'd really, this has to be a decision, uh, the budget for funding for this. We don't contribute much. Um, to subsidize transit, uh, so it's now, kind of a that be a regional thing too. Oh, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get there from here. Yeah, <laughs> this is a greater discussion, and I think this group. Is, I think it's we want to keep it, but it's 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 a higher level discussion. I think I, I agree that it's higher level, although I think it has um, fingers, for lack of a better term, that reach out much more, that, that become relevant much more quickly because no regional transit provider is going to come and serve Scarborough in its current, and um, emphasize that fact that they're not already here. So they're not going to come and serve our density as it currently is. And so um, Definitely shooting for this down the road is a good idea, but also in terms of you know our our zoning um, and our prescribed density, if we don't up that and we don't focus in certain areas where we want transit or we want density, they're not going to come down the road either because it's not um, we can pay into a fund all we want to run a bus on a you know on a particular roadway, but if they're not picking up people. Um, we're sort of like we're either wasting that money or the service provider's not going to come. Um, and so this this was one that I think is just like a real long, long range type thing, um, but that is worth thinking ahead on. Um, I think the downs is a good example of that. Um, 
in addition to you know further building out some of our other areas that are already. Can anyone here envision mm -hmm. a bus going down Route One on rush hour? Stopping every half mile on one of the lanes to pick up people. Well, like like the school buses, right? You know, except for the traffic all day long. Like no one rides them, or I shouldn't say they have low ridership. They don't. They don't originate in Scarborough generally. There's a lot of issues I think around them why they're not more successful. But um yeah, that's a good that's a good point about you know you can't have can't have rapid transit if you don't have the throughput for them to, to get through. Um, and so, you know, there's nothing, nothing that we've talked about here is in the vacuum, like they're all connected. Um, so many of these elements, I think, are connected to other things. Um, but that's, you know, we've talked a bit in this committee too about how that's, um, it's iterative, like you can't have, you can't expect there to be less cars on the road you know, which would enable faster transit without having a transit for people to look at and say like, oh yes, this bus is reliable. I, I do know now that I can take the bus from, you know, down to downtown Portland or whatever. Um, yeah, right. I, I don't think we'll ever long. get to that point until right. we increase density in our highly traveled areas. Right. So, so it, it's, it's as much a density issue right now in our ordinances as I think Anything else. And and it's probably unrealistic to expect someone to come to the table first and with half hour stops. Like it'll be it'll be regional service. So it'll be, you know, Oak Hill to yeah. Portland or Oak Hill to somewhere you know, further, yeah. further out. Um yeah, the school bus style model is arguably I don't think it actually works that great for schools even. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, for 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 public transit. And white zip lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jen, is there a study done for Updating Route One for a rapid bus transit system. I, I, I don't, don't know think if I'm just rapid, so rapid transit capital R capital T is sort of a, or it's a different color. That's right. Um, there's a number of regional rapid transit studies going on right okay. now. Okay. It's one that I'm aware of. Very anxiously waiting for to finish. I don't there's think it's one ongoing that I'm thinking of, but sure. But there have been in the past studies on transit usage in general in Scarborough and that's maybe okay. not what you're thinking. Okay. You but, right but nothing right? ongoing or nothing except the one you're I guess you said it's not problems. Right. So. I was gonna say are you ready for Nick's crazy idea tonight? <laughs> Get one tonight. Okay. Um, sure. I grew up in Wells and one of the big things in Wells, especially as a kid growing up, was the trolley. For dollars now it's really different stuff. For a dollar, I could get on the trolley at the Kennebunk Wells line and go all the way down to the front of as a kid. It took you like an hour and a half mm -hmm. in summer traffic. But it was cool because it stopped Stop everywhere at a whole bunch of places. And I could see Scarborough being one of those towns where if you had a circular so traffic beach. pattern, even if it's was on your second to mm -hmm. the beach, it's it's nice. cool. yeah. 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 I wrote that one down. Judy was my I'm just saying you had all the history of the bus mm -hmm. service. I could see that that model being more successful than a metro transit bus. I think it's to, like introduction. That's transit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are talking about? That's transit. Sure. Um, but we uh, it is an easier pill to swallow, for example. And I think mm -hmm. of that every single Saturday morning when you go down Black Point Road. And at 8.35, there's 35 cars queued up on the side of the road to go to the beach. Oh, yeah. and, and then, you know, when we have parking lots that are full at the beach, but if you go to the high school, there isn't yeah. a single car park anywhere. And so, like, yeah. the engineering me is just like... They at least have to figure out the campground. And they have the trolley that yeah. moves down mm -hmm. to the beach yeah. and back around, you know? We can even break connect yeah. to right. other bulldozer beach. Um, right. You know, so yeah, I, I think that's a great. If um, you know, being an amenity, I can see. I don't know how like, we got it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> well, mm -hmm. they have the process. I've got two daughters who are going to be working in the <laughs> How do I get them to a job? It, it but, they, a job for them? Yeah, yeah. But, but they can't drive. How do yeah. I get them to jobs? Like, is there something on the trolley? Right? Oh, sure. Sure. You know, yeah. Yeah. They're dropping them at the dairy corn. Just thinking, you know, it's it's fun. But as a kid, I used to take the trolley either to work or I would take it out to 
difficult to find the food chain. Yeah, no, that's the way we got around. No licenses. Also, I think that'd be awesome. You know, it was the summertime. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's seasonal here, just going to the beaches, like yeah. you said, a good introduction. I mean, who doesn't work out here in summer? Anyway, oh. yeah. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I'm not too much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> so, frankly, it, it actually might, this, this was part of the, the discussions on the council level too, was how do you increase the access to Americans in town with, you know, you have a growing population, how do we better utilize them? How do we make it simpler and not as frustrating to use what we have? And expanding the Pine Point Park not without taking down a couple houses, you're not doing it. Yeah. Um, expanding, you know, access down to yeah. what pine, what? the Pine Point, you know, beaches. If, or you, want, okay, if yeah. you want to get down there, yeah, without taking down houses, you're not expanding those parking lots. It costs a little But there's maybe there are opportunities for satellite parking lots where families can just say, oh, I'm take my, yeah. park my car here, take the truck to the beach. Yeah. Um, and that's one way to increase that access to the I think they do that like at Disney World. Yeah. I would buy some well and get on the shuttle. If you yeah. want to fix transportation, you know, just, it will come in and yeah. make this place work. Clock. Yeah. <laughs> and Chick fil A. Chick fil A, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Different yeah. It's well, well studied and well documented that when you expand parking, you widen lanes and roadways, you get more cars. Un <laughs> un un unequivocal. That is what will happen. Um, and if you that's what you want, you know, that's, that's the end game. Great. But there are other ways to sort of get to the same end. If the issue is more people want to access the beach, there isn't enough parking. Well, yeah, maybe we turn that on its head and think about, well, maybe we don't, maybe not everybody drives there. For sure, there are going to be people that continue to drive there. Um, but, you know, I think of one example, my kids did a week of summer camp last year at one of the beaches, and um, and this was a camp that goes to a, a different beach each week. So yeah, each week they go to the same beach. Scarborough Beach doesn't let this particular um, camp program park there. They have like a 15 pound square box or something that they normally park around in. And they, so they pick up the kids from a central location, much like we're talking about, which would be parking one vehicle, all but a larger vehicle. But in Scarborough, they don't um, they don't allow parking for this larger vehicle, which means a parent for every single kid, maybe you have two kids, two per. Now you have, you know, you have 20 single occupancy vehicles making that trip twice a day. Kids drop them off and drop them off again at the end at the end of the day. And I'm just, you know, I'm like, okay, I get it, you don't want to find a home for this larger van, but you're kind of kicking the can. You know, organization A because you know I get it. You don't want that in your parking lot, but you're putting this burden on the rest of the, um, the rest of the network. And so, you know, there are little examples of that where if you think um, it's a great idea, I think it would be a great like test project. I don't know if there's like a grant that we could write or if Steve Kutag or Cap would fund a trial. Um, Again, I don't know who would manage it, but someone's gonna need money to do it and yeah. some trolleys. Um, Those are privately operated, aren't they? Well, like at least I don't know. I think they're privately operated. Yeah. 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 For trolleys? Yeah. For trolleys? Yeah. Yeah. That runs, at least the ones that go into Portland. Are you Discovery Tours? Is that what you're talking about? The ones that uh, does the tour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Discovery yeah. Tours. Yeah. yeah, they live right in Scarborough. Pretty sure there's a free trolley up in Booth Bay that I think that one's community. Well, they come uh, down driven. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I just know when we were up there, we we took a just there was a hop on trolley and you have no, to go around the town. And I'm pretty sure it was the town. services and the bus department. You know, you'd have plenty of drivers available. It wouldn't be a hard test. I mean, you could lease one or one of those companies, but I would think you have people in the town itself in the summertime. They're not going to get, you know, if you want to try. Like to implement something. Yeah, the key to successful is one to one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't want to be waiting yeah. in half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, I'm gonna get us back. It was a great idea. We're gonna Sorry. look into it. Um, oh yeah. I haven't seen any hands up. Um, Are we all done? Me? No hands. <laughs> okay. We all done. And I can no, see them on mine. No nope. Okay. Any, anybody looking at that? <laughs> I'm vocal enough as is. <laughs> so this is a summary of just some of the things that we talked about. Um, so the transportation master plan, the scope soon, we're going to have that for you guys. Part of that is the bike byways plan, bike access, um, taking into consideration all the different topics. And then complete streets, um, review, amend, implement, identify streets for improvements, um, using the bike ped, main bike ped for some grants. There's a lot of um, information out there and then transit opportunities. So at least we can think about with complete streets in certain urban areas where we know density, we can think about transit, right? So we, while we know we're not there yet, we can coordinate it. So we're not putting ourselves out of it. Uh, if we, do something with the road. Uh, connectivity planning, that would be subdivision and site plan amendments and changes. So you would have some ordinance amendments, uh, cross access. Um, and again, these are all just brain dump, right? So it's not like we shall do these things. This is just to get you thinking about what, what goes into implementing the comp plan goals for the transportation committee. Um, allowing connectivity in the CPD zoning, looking at that uh, grid framework, block links, so those all roll up into that topic. And then impact fees, we're looking at that from a staff perspective. A street acceptance ordinance, that's this little ordinance that we, we know we should probably have some more uh, information on for administration, for staff, for planning board, public works. Um, and then community services, linkages and amenities. And that's again, tying into that master uh, parks plan and taking it that one step further to get there for trail connectivity and then coming up with what we want trails to look like. And there's some different options. Some of them are just perhaps a, you know, a granite path and some of them are paved and some of them are eight foot. Some of them are just foot for foot traffic. Um, zoning and site plan, some general standards, uh, parking standards and bike facilities would fall into that. You know, we don't require um, bike racks, right? Like. Why not? Like that's super easy. Everybody requires bike racks. Um, Don't bikes come with kickstands anymore? <laughs> <laughs> no. But there's some, you know, there's just some things that we can like beef up, I think. Um, and then shuttle systems to beaches, and then school bus traffic. Those are the two uh, other topics that were kind of out there. So that's the summary of all the things. You know, we have these thirteen things that the the comp plan sort of assigned to this committee rolled it into you know 10 or 11 and then that's what it would look like and what we're asking for is for um and maybe it's not appropriate until we get the town council's goals to see where they're going with any of these things but we're trying to figure out what our work program is for this committee for the next year i find um I like to be very focused and it's cool to talk about things and philosophize and come up with great plans. But I like to go, okay, this year, 2023, we're going to do that and that. And they're tangible and we're going to work hard. We're going to get them done. Right. And then we're going to do that and that. And so I really would um, like to prioritize and figure out what we think we can get accomplished and what we think would be the most meaningful with this committee's time and staff time with what we have. Um, so that's where we are. So that's my Well, that's when my you talk about show. prioritizing, and I think it should be prioritizing and reasonable. Yes. Because yeah. something may be a priority to me, but if it's not reasonable, it's fine to sky. Right. Are you not much wrong? Yeah, I am. <laughs> 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 and doable, like the complete streets is going to need some outside input. Yeah. It, you would, you all would be reviewing it and helping with it, but we can't do that in this committee. But thinking about what we can do um, and what we want to focus on is where we are. And it's a great time, you know, it's the beginning of the year and a good time to get that started. 
Because most of it, though, I mean, because most of these are action items as opposed mm -hmm. to dollar items. But most of it, we do all the input, but it would be the council. Sure. Yeah. The process, I think, do I have one? I thought I did. We should really push the trial yet. Yeah. We got one stamp already. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. Yeah. This is, you know, next steps transportation master plan scope we're going to show you but then we want staff direction for ordinance amendments and then create that work plan um, and then how we can measure the things that we think are important but whenever you all work with staff and come up with this ordinance depending on it may go straight to ordinance committee or it may go back to long-range planning long-range planning is going to be pretty busy this year too <laughs> so it may go to ordinance which is you as well <laughs> um and it may and then it goes to ordinance committee and it kicks around there for a bit and then it goes to council and then it goes back to planning board for a public hearing and then it goes back to council. So it's a lengthy process. It's so five four, years from not everything. Well <laughs> I won't be crazy crazy yeah. trying that it's not going to be trying But the the nice thing is I think if we um, we have our council liaison here that's on the ordinance committee, we have things, you know, we know uh, where we're going. Yeah, and what just so you know, my, my background is, is I'm like really very interested in zoning and the land use ordinances. So I'm really familiar with it. Mm -hmm. I also know where some of the holes are. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Very eager to get to work on it. And making it easier too, because the volunteers in the town, I mean, when you do this planning board, zoning board meetings, like, really should be it's straightforward. It should Here be it guys. Is, guys. Yeah, it really it. should this be. I deep six year round chuck. <laughs> the shuttles. <laughs> you're gonna be wishing you had that when they don't let you drive. Trolley, the trolley. <laughs> so how? I mean, I'll leave it to y'all to figure out how you want to. Would you would you mind sharing with us uh, after this meeting uh -huh. the previous slide uh -huh. where you had kind of this one? Yeah. That one. Yep. This would be great. Want that sent out to us? Is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll send that to you. Okay. And then maybe just put some more thought into it and then for next time. Sure. Is that okay? There's a lot, I know. The system to beaches. Mm -hmm. That had been discussed by mm -hmm. somebody else. Uh, besides this committee. It was on the, it was the third on, thing, which I thought was yeah. like the trails and connectivity. Yeah, it's oh, been talked about on before. this thing here. Yeah, you weren't paying attention. Uh, not explicitly <laughs> on the sheet, <laughs> just in <laughs> and the presentation. Just in presentation. Yeah. Okay. So you didn't miss it then. I thought maybe you had some magic. Nick slipped it in. There. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it was in there. Um, it was in there about one of the ideas. Yeah, because it's come up several times. I've heard. It. You know, it's just. We I have this easily detect. Yeah. Try it for a summer, get a grant money, yeah. and you look up. You see numbers. It's like, geez, you know, from July first to the August fifteenth, and then after it died right off. You know, so we mm -hmm. could, we could probably right. figure trends. In that I think that'd be a revenue source too. Yeah. yeah. Well, instead, what's it? We need all the parking. Yeah, yeah. There's the parking fees to uh, offset. <laughs> well, yeah. No, but the parking, like at the beach, is like, I don't know, $15 or mm -hmm. whatever it is. So, a family, if you could park at the high school, could buy or something yeah. and get a shuttle down. Take the shuttle for yeah. five. No, no, for <laughs> five. <laughs> yeah, you, you get parking and, and the shuttle. And which just depends what kind of makes a great idea tonight, unless it's worth pursuing. But, you know, if you really do it right, you, it would have to be strategic sauce. Yeah, and then we've got a whole we've got a whole bunch of school buses that parking. sit there all summer that we could use for shuttles too. They'd have to be in locations that make a lot of sense. So yes, might be a light lift in the sense of pull out the map and like, where does this make sense? And then okay, these are the ones that make sense. What do we need to put there in order for this to actually or it's functional? Limited stop for the first time, and then sure. you start seeing what the demand is and say, oh, we're going to have this. Or it's express from high school to you know the Pine Point high school to Scarborough Beach. You know you have different routes. That's that's something. Yeah. When do the beaches open? Year round. No, but um, when does the, the when, when do they have May? Yeah. It's nice July. July. <laughs> <laughs> Scarborough Beach is Pride. Pride. Yeah, so that's. Uh, 
Memorial, Memorial Day. To Labor Day. Labor Day. Yeah, it starts early and later. Beach days are really hot coming out. Really? Oh, I, I was just see. I saw surfers yesterday. I, I, I like surf Yeah, they surf your own. Oh, so cool. So cool. But you know when when the temperatures get up to about fifty degrees or sixty, you'll you'll see people down at the beach. Okay. They're just dying to get down. I'll be at the New Year's Day. There were so many people at the beach. That's crazy. It's used to. Yeah. Okay. So the trolley could work here. They're not be swimming. They're walking. <laughs> yeah. Well, that yeah. Was down. <laughs> yeah. Lost it. Okay. Um, thank you, Autumn, for your uh, I do not see anyone. Oh, Portia has her hand up. Let's see. Hang on, let me see if I can. It's after eight. How can I get her there? Help me. Uh, I, I think all I need Portia, to do is talk. Portia, we can't hear you. Um, oh. Portia, yeah. you're muted. Can you ask? You can click. She it. wasn't. It wasn't muted. Yeah. Maybe that's what I was what I was going to say is we've got a whole bunch of school buses. Portia, we sit. still can't hear you. Sorry. Still can't hear. Chuck, can you try talking um, so we can see if we can hear audio? I, I can hear her. Yeah, we can't hear anything. Um, well, let me lower my hand. Still can't hear me? Um, what's the more here? Chat now. Oh, goodness. Um, still can't hear me? What about now? I don't know what else to really try. What else to sign? Still not. <laughs> Portia, you can hear us though. I can I can hear you, yes. Raise your hand if you can hear us. Uh I'm sorry, we're having technical difficulty. Is it a quick <laughs> question or a really long comment? Can you type it in the chat? Oh, that's an idea. Um chat. Chat. Um, <laughs> we also can't hear him. We can't hear so it's either. some audio it's issue on our side. Where's our IT people? Um, I mean, can we? Did can it we come off? Leave the back up. Okay, maybe you can. But they've been able to hear us the whole time. No problem. Yeah. Oh, maybe yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, you see that? 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 Oh, you see can you hear us? Yes. Thing about can, hear you. You <laughs> can you hear us? We can hear you, Portia. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, good, because we've got school buses sitting there all summer. Why not use those for shuttles? I mean, they they benefit by being used anyway. Um, and it's I think trolleys, running though. Well, trolleys. Uh, uh, school buses. Okay, <laughs> <Great> job. <laughs> Well, you can do a bus skin. But no, but Shabi Island, that's what they use for their, you know, because you go down to the dock, there's no parking there. So they shuttle them from right near 295 in Yarmouth. Um, those are school buses they run back and forth. And it's a bumpy, I mean, bumpy yeah, a bumpy ride. I know, but we've, we've already got them. We, you know, we already own them. <laughs> it makes it simple, even if you wanted to trial it. Yes. Great idea. Probably drivers wanting to get paid. Yeah. I like it. That's the most tangible idea you, we have of the you night. You run into is inter intra departmental liability and all this other stuff. Just try to leave the third party company. company. That's for the staff to figure out. Well, it's, 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 it's an issue, issue though. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but at least it reports up through to the town. Yeah. 
school board, I'm saying, comes up. Yeah. And it's through the town budget. So yeah. I mean, it's, at least it's. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there would be financial transactions yeah. that have to happen, but it's possible. I mean, other towns use their buses for public sure. use. Are there any other comments? Questions? Our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, February 28th. Um, oh, access question. What's happening with the uh, is it the survey, the transportation survey that we started doing stuff like implement or not implementing, but we we came up with topics last fall. Sure, which one you mean? Um, well, I think that's a study that it's a million dollar study. It's going to be less than money. Oh, <laughs> right? Is that what yeah, you're about? yeah, yeah. The, is that the is that the one that we right. came up with the topics in the fall? Uh, maybe the master plan. February Maybe yeah. that was it. I, I thought it was a study or some yes. kind of last analysis year. by an outside company. Yeah, yeah. So ultimately, that's where the transportation master plan would be a study done by an outside group for the benefit of the town that would look at the whole transportation network that we've got and help us identify what it is we'd like to have in the future. Does that yeah. sound right? Yeah, that, that sounds right. So staff has been working on, so there's a couple steps um, that we have to go to before we can, before we have a third party like that at the table. Okay. We have to put out a proposal and have companies Submit on it. Nope, just kidding. Going I, I, I <laughs> and at our next meeting, we're going to discuss. So. Um, we will. Oh, it's coming back. Be up. talking a little bit more about the scope of what that study was oh. really going forward. Okay. Thank you. Cool. I just didn't know if it was still in our court or if it had moved on. So that's we're playing ping pong with staff a little bit. Sounds that good. Part, right? <laughs> um. <laughs> Well, I do have one other comment, actually. Um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe back in like December, I think, um, GT Cog, the Greater Portland Council of Governments, mm -hmm. held two different uh, or several different public workshops uh, mm -hmm. covering their region. And these were intended to talk about a regional Vision Zero plan. So, Vision Zero is another. Um, Nation international actually um, initiative for eliminating fatalities and serious injuries on um, public roads. And um, so GPCOG is leading an effort to create a regional vision, vision zero plan, particularly, um, which ultimately at the end, uh, once a plan is adopted, member communities will be eligible to submit for federal funding um, for projects to help address those key issues mapped out in the plan. Um, they had a couple of public sessions back in December. The one covering Scarborough was actually held in Biddeford. Um, but this plan, so they're now in the process of sort of collecting public um, information that they receive at these public workshops. In addition to that, in case you couldn't go to a, another public meeting in December, like I did it, um, there is an online survey that I will share with this group and a couple of other groups. Um, it's fairly short, it's pretty straightforward, and it's basically just looking for your feedback on where um, you, believe there to be safety concerns or you know I you know I watched an accident happen at this intersection I would do this differently if x y and z was safer for me that type of thing um and there isn't an end date per se on um the online survey but the sooner that they get feedback the more likely it is to be rolled into the plan that they're working on um and so I just thought that it would be great um input if people have you know, Portia, I know in the past, for example, you brought up a couple of um, questions to this committee about areas that were particularly dangerous to bike through. So those would be great topics. Um, if you've been in a car accident, that would be a great topic. If you fear of, you know, of any of these things, um, 
those would be great additions as well. Does this survey request a donation at the end of it? It does not. No. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's all free and open to the public. And the effort, the study that GPCOG is conducting is pretty extensive. They have an advisory panel that they have um, collected from. It's very, very wide reaching. There's members from all the different communities, but there's um, representatives from the state police, there's public health representatives, there's um, data analysts, um, and everything in between. And so um, it'll be that group that ends up helping to um, to formulate that plan that you are working on. And like I said, I think there, I think it's 22 member communities or somewhere in that, uh, I might have the number wrong, but Scarborough is a GPCOG member community and um, if you are really interested in deep diving into the internet, you can read about the Safe Streets for All grant, which is a federal grant program that has very large amounts of money to give away to communities to help address some of these things. And so um, the ticket to that <laughs> is this, this plan. Um, so. That's all. That's all I have. Can I make a motion, Roger? Do you want, well, like this? No, no. Motion to adjourn. Oh, you need to adjourn? Yeah. The one we can have a count on you. Please. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat>